This is the word of God's grace brought to you by the Standing Church International. We're a life-transforming church with a vision of raising a supernatural army for the Lord. Get ready to be blessed by God's word and experience miracles. Three lights that heal. Ephesians 1, 16 to 20. Colossians 1, 13 to 14. And James 5, 14 to 16. Three lights that heal. Ephesians 1, 16 to 20. I cease not to pray for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being what? Enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards word who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of what? Of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. James chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Verse 14, is any sick among you? Let him call for the others of the church, and let them prove him, anointing him with oil in the name of Jesus. And verse 15, and the prayer of faith shall do what? Save the sick. And the Lord shall do what? Raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be Light is God's permanent solution to man's earthly problems. There is nothing you get light for that you will not triumph over. When you are getting light, it might not look spectacular, but it's the way to live the life of triumph. There is nothing like having a stable Christian life, a Christian life that is not coasting on emotions, so that the greatest thing that happens to us as Christians is not that we are excited about what we believe, is that we have known whom we have believed. And this knowing produces a joy that can't be quenched, produces a satisfaction that cannot know hunger again. You see, the person that comes to the waters of Jesus, he said, he that thirsts after righteousness shall be what? Shall be filled. That means that for us who were thirsty and we came to the cross and then we drank of his righteousness, we have been filled. There's no vacuum. If there's any desire I have, is to see more manifestations of what Christ has done. But when it comes to whether I have peace or not, there's perfect peace in my heart. See, you have known me for years. Do I look like a desperate man? Have you ever met me looking like somebody that lacks something? That is looking for something spiritual? Yet, I have stories of telling you how I broke into encounters of different things to break into different places. All that time, did you see in me, if I didn't tell you the story, will you know that I was in any of such? You won't know. Because we are not searching for what is lost. We have found him. Philip went and told Nathaniel, we have found him of whom it is written. We have found him. He's not lost. We have found him. Nathaniel said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said, come and see. As he got there, he looked at Philip. Behold, an Israelite in whom is no guy. <laughs> Nathaniel said, how did you know me? He said, uh, when you were under the tree and Philip sent for you, I saw you. He said, you are the Christ. He said, because I told you I saw you. That's why you believe I'm the Christ. He said, but you will still see greater things. You will see the heavens opened and you will see the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. It has been since then till forever. We are not searching for what is lost. That realm has met us. Everyone has kissed the earth. There is satisfaction in my heart. There is joy. I'm not looking for what is not lost. Even when there are areas where I'm trusting God for results, for a change, or whatever it is, there's this thing that knows that it is already in the provision of Christ. I have understood the difference between legal and vital. When it comes to legal, I know all things are provided for me, and I rest in that. Somebody said, in your light, 
of rest have I found rest to me? One of my dear sisters said to me on my birthday, she said, I want to tell you 29 things I know about you and that I love about you, my sister. And she said, how any time I speak with you, I go into rest immediately on anything that bothers my heart. Into rest immediately. Because I myself carry rest. Many of you, when you have terrible challenges, the first person you want to talk to is me. You just want to call me and just let me say, that's not a problem. Don't worry now. All will be well. And you know it's more than what I'm saying. There are times you will look at me and you will tell me a problem is going on and I will look at you and say, Kai, this thing. It's okay. Don't worry. Then the day I look at you and say, don't worry. All is well. You go into peace. It's an aura. Somebody sat down on a chair. I sat down with every depression. Do you not know I sat on it? And then was pouring out her heart to somebody that was sitting beside her. I continued talking. Then when she stood up and it was time to go, she said, I cannot explain. But when I entered into this chair, something grabbed me. And all the feeling of depression left. Because I don't carry depression around. And one of the things that gives the stability, that makes you not to be depressed at any time in your life, is the light you carry. The light you are carrying, light satisfies. Light is sweet. You can't know light and no bitterness. It is a pleasant thing for the eyes to behold the sun. Light is God's permanent solution to man's problem. Therefore, may the light of God shine on your situation. So, there are times that chemicals in your brain are not working happiness. It does not mean you lack joy. You will use the joy of the Lord to rewire the chemicals. I can't dwell on depression. Yet, there are times of my life that are more quiet than other times. I've never said I'm depressed before. Like, what am I depressed for? What am I depressed for? How does depression work? How does it work? I don't get the mechanism of action. I just know situations. I know that there are situations that are more pleasant than the others. And I know I have answers. I might not see the answer down, but I have it. I might not be able to pull it out because of my current spiritual level, but I have a spiritual father. So, at any point, even if I can't get the answer, at least somebody will look for it for me. If you meet me, I can't get the answer. I will refer your problem. So, your problem from orb leader to zonal leader to the pastor in charge of orb to pastor himself to pastor spiritual father, your problem cannot lack, you cannot lack answers before he passes through all this kid. So, what is the problem that is depressing? On your own, you are an explosive device. I wonder when people carry problems by themselves and they are just going, they are going, nobody to solve the problem for them. They are saying you are depressed. Who is suffering from your depression? Is you. You better share the burden quickly so that you can have joy and another person will bear the burden for you. The Bible says we ought to learn to bear each other's burdens. And it says let every man bear his own burden. That bearing his own burden is not talking about you bearing bad situations. He's talking about you taking responsibility. Galatians chapter 6, that is why he says that make a careful exploration. That's bear your own responsibility. That is let every man bear his own burden. But apart from that, in the first verses, it says that anybody that is strong ought to, you know, I mean, I think it's Romans 15 that says anyone that is strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. In Galatians chapter 6, it says that if you see any brother that is caught in a fault, he says that restore him gently in the spirit of meekness and then he says let us bear one another's what burden but a burden that is not shared cannot be born there is a lot of entitlement mentality where people expect people to come and ask them what's wrong with them but when we ask you will you tell us so it is your job to realize your company and open up to them don't be a burden alone i was praying about some things but as soon as i heard from my spiritual father like this i just say sir there are two things that are on my mind and I shared with him and then he spoke to me and that's enough for me I don't have wala in my life light has found me I found light you too have found light there is no light you are looking for that is not installed in you for many years of following it's time to wake up awake to light the light in you is God's permanent solution to any earthly problem that man can face this light in you it's time to rise up and bring it up it's the light in you that will heal you it is the light that God brings. He sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. God's word heals. God's word delivers. Whatever you are going through, I curse that thing. May your joy be full today. So light is so important that there are times that it is guarded before it gets to man. And there are times that after it has gotten to man, it is, men are still asked to guard it. The angel of the Lord brought 
and guarded light and information to Daniel. And then when he was finishing the information, he told Daniel, seal up the words of the book until the appointed time. What was the appointed time? Years later, he took John on the island of Patmos and you look at the book of Daniel and the book of Revelations and you just see that it's almost the same thing. A lot of similarities. And at the end, John is about to seal the book. And well, the Bible doesn't say he's about to seal the book, but the instruction that the angel gives looks like that. The angel says, don't seal because the time is now. Leave it open. Daniel 12, 4. Daniel 12, 9. Revelations 22, I think verse 10. So, light is so important. God gives you light and asks you to guard it. When God is giving you light on healing, guard it. You will need it. This thing I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. People have done negative things to me, but nobody has successfully hurt me. You will not hurt me, you cannot hurt me in the name of Jesus. My heart is sealed. He said, my son, attend to my words, inclined and yes to my saying, let them not depart from before your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For their life to all that find them are medicine to all their flesh. Now, when you find them, that says, guard your heart. Because the light that comes must be protected. Because once light enters your heart, life flows out of your heart. Out of your heart are the issues of life. Guard it. The light that enters you, you keep. You don't give it to bad company. You don't give it to social media news. You don't give the light that God gives you to talk of unbelief. You guard the light until it produces. Because light produces in stages. The kingdom of God is like a corn that is planted. How it grows, a man does not know. But when it grows, it begins to come out. The blade, the air, and the full corn in the air. It comes in stages, 30, 60, 100. Some caught it, they didn't understand, the devil stole it. Some caught it, the cares of the world choked it. Some caught it, persecution choked it. But others, it fell on good ground, 30, 60, 100. That means how you attend to God's word is what determines how God's word yields in your life. This year, may you receive strength to act on the word of God. May God's word be light unto your path. May it be lamp unto your feet. This year, if anybody will describe you, they will describe you as a word man. Let me tell you something. Word men don't always look like excited men. But they have the most stable results. Check them. Don't run around looking for dopamine. Don't take spiritual excitement like alcohol. Every time you want to be excited, every time you want to be high, you are taking hard drugs spiritually. It is hard drugs. You live life with joy. Let the joy come from inside and keep you smiling. Not that you are looking for external things to always make you happy. Ah, service today was on fire. When people say that, check why they are saying it. It's not always a sign of spirituality. It could be a sign that something happened to them, but it's not always a sign of lasting impact on some people. Because some people depend on fire to feel that God is present. I don't depend on that. That's why you can wake me up from my sleep any time and the fire of God will land. Because I don't shake myself to feel it. He is with me now. I can turn up the atmosphere of this place now, not later. If you have not learned of him, say it. I have not learned of him. Don't spiritualize it. Don't say, you know, there are times that the power of God is present. There are times the power of God is not present. You have not learned of him. Don't spiritualize your ineptitude. Learn of God. Jesus said, learn of me. My yoke is what? Easy. And my body is what? Light. If what you are carrying on your neck is too heavy, maybe you have not learned of Christ. This pressure you are feeling is not a pressure that is of God. Light does not come with pressure. Light is light because it is light. Light brings ease. Light makes it easy to let go. Light brings rest. Let us labor to enter into our rest for the word of God is quick. That means that the word of God is what brings rest to a man. Let your soul find rest. He leads me beside still waters. He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I fear no evil. Thou art with me. Psalm 23 is a psalm of calmness. 
It is a psalm of ease and massive prosperity in the midst of such internal ease while there are problems around. What are the problems around? Moving in the path of righteousness, his path does not look like a straight path. It looks like he's going around and around and around, but despite all of that route that is looking like a long route, he has trusted in the great shepherd to get him to the top of the mountain. He walks through the valley of the shadow of death. He's supposed to collapse, but his response, I fear no evil. His response, thou art with me. Is he with you? He has said in a place, I will never ever leave you. What else do you need to know? You say you want to feel something when he has said, is your feeling higher than he's saying? What God says is higher than what you feel. I live and move by what he says, whether I feel it or not. He has said he will never leave me, he will never forsake me, so that I can boldly say, God is my helper. I will not fear. God is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, look at enemies around. I don't make a big deal of them because he will prepare a table before me. In their presence, don't die. Sit down and watch me eat, then die of starvation. This year, you will have the last laugh of. Aya, bara The demons that have been hunting your family, chasing your finances, they will salivate when they see your table. You'll be holding balango for your enemy. Your enemy will see you eating, will salivate. He said, Come, come, come. When he, he withdraw the thing back, he cry. Have you seen where the Araza becomes the Arazi? That's what is happening to that foul devil in your life today. You are rising with strength to embarrass everything that was bent on embarrassing you. Everything that was bent on embarrassing your family, you are making a mess of it. This is lies that heals. This is light that does what? That heals. That generational pattern that wants to make a mess of a family, I crush it. The stranger shall be afraid. The stranger shall flee. They shall be afraid out of their close places. How terrible are you, O oh Lord, in your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies will submit themselves unto you. Lord, arise, come down, rend the heavens. Let the mountains smoke. You have a mighty God. Whatever is standing as a barrier in your life, standing as a barricade to your destiny, standing in the way of the advancement that you are looking at in front of you. Break! Let this be the beginning of a new order of promotion in your life. Look, you will get out of these 30 days. Everywhere will be calm. You will come out, you say, where are you trouble? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Because God has lifted your head above the waters. And God wants to stretch forth his hand in permanence towards you. He does it with light. He does it with light. May there be an outflow of light in your life that will transform may you begin to operate in a flow of revelation grace like you never have light is the source of resurrection power light makes alive the word of god is what living light makes alive Light is the source of life. It is the source of resurrection. I said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That once light comes, you will know the power that raised Jesus from the dead. That means one light from heaven can turn your eternity around. Not just your destiny. One light today. Today, not tomorrow. One light on this mountain of these 30 days can change your life forever. There's a book, one word from God can change your life. It's not an understatement. If God breathes, your life is changed. Not to talk of talking. May you hear God's voice loudly in your heart. I'm seeing the power of God coming on someone that has been weak. You have been feeling weak, drained. You have been feeling weak. As I speak now, Lord, let the wave of your spirit move over that person. And let there be a healing. Let there be a strength. Let there be a surge of strength for destiny as I speak right now. 
the state of mind that induces pessimism is ill. <laughs> That's why I'm here in my heart. Pessimism. Pessimism. That thing that makes you pessimistic is ill. <laughs> what are the three lights that heal? Number one is the light of forgiveness. Ah, God is not angry with me. That light is the central light. That is the northern star of the gospel. Everything takes its roots around that. That my sins are forgiven. They brought a man in Mark chapter 2. And they dropped him. And Jesus would have said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Who is this man that he thinks he has power to forgive sins? He said, which one is easier to say? That his sins are forgiven. Or that he rises up and is healed. But that you will know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. I say unto you, rise up, take up your bed and walk. His healing was an offshoot of his forgiveness. That because my sins are forgiven, I'm healed. God can't be angry with you again. God is not sponsoring any disease in your life, even when it's entered by your mistakes. God is not sponsoring any disease in your life, even if it entered or when it entered by your mistakes. God is not against you. Diseases come to people because they make mistakes. Sicknesses come to people for different reasons. But God does not inflict sickness to punish. It has been taken care of in Christ. Healing is a major physical manifestation of forgiveness. I know what I'm saying to you because I have stood on the word of God for healing for years. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And at every stage of standing on God's word, there's nothing you will battle like condemnation. Condemnation of you didn't speak it enough. Condemnation of when you got angry. Condemnation of this. Condemnation of that. Something that just tells you that you have not put your acts together. If you need all your acts together, then what's the need for the Savior? So that there is a truth that must never leave your lips. My sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. God is healing your mind. He's healing your mind. God's love is wiping away shame. Healing your mind. Yeah. It takes the healing power of God to heal the mind. When people have undergone abuse before, it steals everything from them. Their joy, their confidence, their strength. It opens their hearts, opens them up to demonic manipulations and attacks. As I speak, Lord, everyone that needs any form of healing, let this flood of the anointing pick them, sweep over them tangibly. This power I've known for years, this healing power that restores. Lord, whoever is out there listening to me, let the wave of your love and your power sweep over them. Let your soul be healed. Let every fragment be put together. Let your personality be restored. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord that you let thee. Have eaten I am the canker womb, the palm womb. Your confidence is restored. He the healing power, the love of God goes through I am the Lord. From today, your you are whole. Your you are old.
God has strengthened the fabrics of your personality. You will never second guess yourself again. Some of your souls are new. New. Renewed by the power of God. What a refreshing time in the word it has been. We believe you've been blessed by God's word and have received encounters for mighty miracles. To download more messages like this one or listen to the full conference message, please visit our website at www.thestandingchurch.com. There you will find an abundance of resources to help you grow in your Christian walk and deliver miracles of destiny to you. We cannot wait to hear your testimonies and we look forward to having you connect with us. Please write to us at info at the standingchurch.com or call us on plus 2348-1347-73145. Or connect with us via our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at The Standing Church. If you have never made the decision to be saved and would like to receive Jesus into your life or rededicate your life to Him, please say the following words out loud. Lord Jesus, I confess you as Lord over my life. I believe that you died for me and that God raised you from the dead. I receive all that you have made available for me through your death, burial, and resurrection. I declare right now that I am a child of God. I'm free from sin and I am the righteousness of God. Amen. Congratulations, you are now saved. We're so glad you made the decision to receive Christ today. Please write to us at plus 234-813-477-3145 to share your salvation testimony with us today. In or around the city of Ibadan, we invite you to join us at the Dominion Center for each of our services in the week. Join us on Sundays for our worship service by 9 a.m. and our teaching services on Mondays by 5 p.m. Our prayer and communion services on Fridays by 5 p.m. Each of these services are put together to deliver God's word and power to you and bring you into the life of prosperity, health, dominion, and liberty that God has ordained for you. Not in a bad home. Don't miss out. Our services and special meetings are streamed online via our Mixedar and YouTube platform at The Standing Church. We look forward to having you worship with us. God bless you. We also invite you to join us for Heart Enlargement Special. This destiny-defining meeting is our annual citywide crusade where we have the privilege of hosting the visionary Manifold Grace Ministries. Date, July 12th and July 13th, 2024. Venue, the International Conference Center, University of Ibadan, Ibadan, or your state, Nigeria. Don't miss this crowning encounter with God. It will be a time of miracles, healings, deliverances, breakthroughs and transformation. God bless you. We love you and God bless you.